All right, welcome to another episode of Let's Help Somebody. So I was cruising through our Blender the other day, as I do every single day, and I found this uh, OP, Admiral Radis TR, saying, I'm trying to make a Macintosh Plus. I have the shape done right, but the Mac has very smooth corners. How would I go about making these corners smooth? I can't use subdivision services, or I can't make subdivision services work the way I need them to. Well, I am going to help Admiral Radis TR uh, get subdivision surface working. Um, subdivision surface is the correct way to go about this, um, but there is some geometry issues. So I offered, um, is there any way to fix bad topology? I said, send me the file and I'll record a YouTube video fixing it. And so here we are. Um, now here is the model that he sent me. And while it's not horrible, um, it does use a lot of n-gons and we will be talking about n-gons in a little bit. Um, and the reason why the subdivision surface modifier doesn't work is because of those end guns, and that looks pretty awful, but we'll fix that. Um, luckily, the topology is not too bad, which means we'll be able to easily convert it to something that works with the subdivision surface modifier. Now, one thing I want to point out, and as OP correctly notes, is that it has smooth corners. Now, in real life, Everything has smooth corners, whether you're looking at the edge of a table, uh, the, even the edge of a knife. If you look at it close up enough, it is smooth. So there's no such thing as a perfectly hard corner anywhere. So I'm going to open up a new Blender real quick and just make a quick demonstration of kind of the, the subdivision surface workflow. So I'm going to add a cube here. And I'm going to, let's see, I will extrude it out a couple times just to make an interesting surface for us to work with. Something like that. Now, if we put a subdivision surface uh, modifier on here, it looks weird. Let's shade smooth. Uh, but let's say we, we want just this curve right here and everything else to be kind of sharp. Well, I can go and put an edge loop here and an edge loop here and edge loop here edge loop here and then from the front or the side view I can put an edge loop here and here and now we have just that curve and I will bump up the uh, subdivisions a couple times now we might want to put an edge loop here or we can control the angle of that curve with another edge loop but what you see here oh we probably want an edge loop there as well is that while this is a hard corner if you zoom in, it is actually slightly smooth. And when you zoom out, you can see that there's actually a little bit of a highlight on these hard edges, which is very realistic. Like you can see right there, the light is bouncing off this edge. And if we were to duplicate this again, and this time I'm going to not have the subdivision surface on it. Um, here we have just the hard model. Why is this, oh, shade flat. You can see that <clears throat> this edge doesn't actually have anything reflecting, whereas with this edge, it does. And so even though uh, you want hard corners in some areas and you want smooth corners in other areas, I probably want this to be more like that. Um, or actually, I probably should put an edge loop there as well. Um, having subdivision surface on means that when you zoom in, you do have those nice reflections along hard corners. Um, and so what we want to do is prepare this model so that it can have that. So here's our, our wireframe. And before we start, I'm gonna just do some housekeeping. Um, right now, the pivot point of the object is right there, which is kind of a weird place. And also the, um, the model's kind of underneath the floor a little bit. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go into face mode and select these bottom two faces. With shift S, I'm gonna say cursor to selected, which will put the cursor right there in the center of the bottom. Then in object mode, I'm gonna right click, set origin to 3D cursor. So now the object rotates and moves around its bottom. So if we press N to bring up the menu, I can now go to location and hit zero. And now it's right there in the center of our world. It's not underneath the floor. It, it looks good. And that's just a little bit of housekeeping. Another thing too, which you see all the time is you want to make your scale one, one, one. Here we have negative on X, which is generally a bad idea. Um, it's not horrible. Um, but sometimes having a negative scale will break things. Uh, and so I'm just with the model select control A 
and hit apply scale. And so now that's one, one, one. And that helps when you're doing your modifiers because um, as a lot of Blender people on YouTube have mentioned, these modifiers reference this scale. And if the scale is anything besides one, 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 sometimes you'll get weird results. But enough about that. Um, let's talk about N-Gons. Now this is one face because, well, when I click it, there's only one thing selected. And you can see right here, it says there's one face out of 326, or 136, sorry. <laughs> um, and there's 298 triangles. Now, this is an N-Gon because it has, if we go into vertice mode, it has a lot of points. It's not a quad. Uh, a quad would only have four. So let's do a quick review on N-Gons. I'll go back to this Blender file hide those and let's create a cube here now this cube if I were to for example let's um, just make it a slightly different shape something like that and then if I were to delete this edge here and then fill this in with a face this is an n-gon right and so it has one two three four five six corners making it an n-gon whereas this face is a quad because it only has four. Now, generally speaking, when you're doing topology, you always want to be working in quads. You want everything to be quads. Sometimes you can allow for triangles, but very often you want everything to be quads. Like if you can make things quads, it'll just make your life easier. Um, and then in situations where you get yourself into a corner where things aren't working right, if it's in quads, it's usually easier to fix. Now. There is a reason why um, using n-gons is bad, and that is because internally everything is a triangle. So if I were to right-click on this and say triangulate, I might have to do this in edit mode. Tries triangulate faces. You can see that it turns it into triangles, and that n-gon is actually four triangles. And basically every model before it gets sent to the graphics card to be drawn on the screen gets turned into triangles. So you're not actually saving any triangles by having this end gone here. You're not optimizing in any way. Um, it's going to be turned into triangles. So the triangle count is more important. Let's undo this. than the face count right here. It says face is nine out of nine, right? And actually let's go and um, delete this edge as well. Dissolve edge. Okay, so it says we have eight faces, but 20 triangles. And if we were to go in and triangulate this again, now we have 20 faces and 20 triangles. Notice how the triangles didn't change. If we undo, we now have eight faces and 20 triangles. So ultimately, the, if, you're, if you care about performance, triangles is the number that you care about. And whether you like it or not, this n-gon will be turned into triangles. So if we were to triangulate just this n-gon, you can see it turns into four. So you have four here. This one will turn into four. That's eight. And then you have nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, because each of these quads gets turned into two triangles. So you're not, you're not optimizing by using n-gons. And as you can see here, this model has a lot of n-gons. This entire top surface is an n-gon. Um, this entire edge is an n-gon. This thing is an n-gon. Um, and so we're going to go and fix all of those things because we don't want any n-gons to exist. Um, and then that will make it much easier for our subdivision surface modifier to work. Um, one of the reasons why the subdivision surface modifier doesn't work, let's just um, add a plane here. Remember I said that everything gets turned into triangles. So what happens when I, I drag this corner upwards? All right, well, you can kind of see it's that there's a, an edge here. It turns it into triangles and you can't really tell, but they're like from some angles you can't tell, but when you look at it from the right angle, you can see that the edge it's placing is right here. So if I were to triangulate this, you can see that's where it placed the edge. However, what if we were to bring this one up? Well, now we have a different behavior. Before, it placed the edge kind of between where these two would be. But now we have a different shape, right? And so 
with a quad, it's, it's kind of easy to see, but let's do something like a circle. Here we have a giant n-gon. And how is this circle going to be turned into triangles? Well, we can triangulate it, and this is one way, right? That's kind of messy. It doesn't really look very cohesive. Um, but if you were to drag, let's undo that, one of these points up, how is it going to deform the circle? Each point actually has a completely different effect when you try moving the circle. Look, look how big that triangle is when you move that point up versus, well, that's another big one, versus a sm slightly smaller one versus an even smaller one. Each one of these points behaves differently because the way the triangles are happening internally. So what we can do is, um, actually I'll just undo until we have, there we go. There's other ways to fill the circle. For example, if we do control F and then we choose grid fill, here we have, I'm gonna just, um, I'm gonna duplicate this so we can kind of see a few different versions of these. So here we have an n-gon, here we have a grid fill, and then here we have this triangulate. And what we'll do is, so basically this n-gon, right, is just a single face, but it could be represented by this smooth grid or by this kind of weird random geometric pattern, right? And which one do you think is better? Well, chances are, if you're modeling this one, which is made entirely out of squares and kind of has edges that make sense, is going to be a lot easier to work with than this one, where it's just kind of random, right? But so there's two different ways you can take this shape and turn it into faces. Um, and this one is obviously much cleaner and easier to work with. But if you don't deliberately tell it to do this one, it does this one by default. This is the one where... Um, you know, if you bring up some triangles, they'll be smaller, whereas if you bring up other triangles, it'll make a large distortion. I mean, sorry, vertices. So if you leave Blender with just n-gons, it will do something weird and ugly. And this is not uh, true just for Blender. This is true for Maya or Max or any 3D modeling package. If you just have an n-gon, it doesn't know how you want that n-gon to look like, so it'll just do something random like this, and you'll get weird distortions. But if you deliberately tell it, I would like it to look like this, um, then it'll you know, behave much more predictably because you have a bunch of nice little pretty squares which will deform predict, you know, um, easily versus this, which is just kind of random nonsense. Okay, so that's just a little brief um, explanation. We're already 12 minutes in, um, but it's so important to understand that n-gons are a bad idea. So let's see how we can go about fixing this. Well, the first thing is let's just break up some of these into um, uh, quads. All right, so I'm going to pause here. Okay, sorry, I took a quick break there. But All right, so we're going to break these into quads. Now, one handy tool is the knife tool, which allows you to snap to a vertice and then kind of draw. And we can just keep drawing all the way around and I'm not being perfect I'm actually kind of being sloppy but that's okay because we'll fix it soon so I'm gonna just go through here go to here and then I'm gonna connect it to right there and hit enter and sometimes it won't connect but we'll fix that let's see if we can fix it here that worked and then let's try from this angle again there might be an extra edge or something I'm not seeing here yeah what's going on here and see that's an example of where n-gons just don't play nicely like for some reason that's not working. So I'm gonna go into face mode and just delete this face. Actually delete faces, not vertices. And now I can select this edge and this edge, whoops. Aha, so we have an extra hidden edge here. Um, I'm just gonna delete that edge altogether because we don't need it. And there's an extra edge here apparently as well. So got some weird stuff going on, but we'll fix all that. Um, now for this slot thing, we probably also want to have um, edge loops for that as well. So let's let's go in here and try to fix up as much as I can. Ah, so what is this? This vertice doesn't seem to be doing anything. I'm just going to dissolve that vertice. Doesn't seem to be helping us here. So there's that triangle, and then I will make this. Whoops. So 
So I just have to manually select here. Okay, so, and then this vertice is not doing anything. I'm going to dissolve that one for now. And then I'll put this back as an n-gon for now. But now we have an edge loop that goes all the way around, and it's kind of wonky. If we go into our wireframe, because I just drew it, it's just kind of random, right? So what we're going to do is select that edge loop, and we don't want to change this vertice, so I'm going to leave that one alone. But what I'm going to do is actually put the cursor here and say uh, selection cursor to selected. Select this edge loop. Oops. And you can hold Alt to select an edge loop. I'm going to deselect this one because I don't want to change that one. And then I'm going to press period and say scale around the 3D cursor. So our 3D cursor is right here. Go into wireframe. And if I scale, hit X and push zero, it now lines up all of those vertices with the cursor. And you know, if you were doing it from the side view, you could press Y. If you're doing it from the top view, you could press Z or whatever. Um, but now we have an edge loop, which is perfectly straight that goes all the way across. And now this, oops, is a quad, which is what we want. This is a quad, this is a quad, this is a quad, and this is a quad. So already I'm starting to turn these into squares, which is what will make this work. Now let's see if I can, I'm gonna have to do the same thing here. So let's turn this into squares. And again, I'm just gonna kind of sloppily up. It's already not working because of the n-gons. And so you can really see how you can get yourself into trouble with n-gons because they just, they break. They, they don't, you see it's not drawing that line there. So I'm going to delete this entire face because it's not working. We might have an extra edge around here or something. I'm not sure. So now that worked. You could see before that was not working. Now we can take this one, which we don't need, dissolve it, dissolve this one, and we have quads again. Um, let's see, can I put a... Yeah, see... When you're dealing with n-gons, it just Blender behaves so weird. Um, it's, it, it doesn't like it. So let's connect that over there. And then let's see, we can connect that down there. We probably want an edge loop to go around here. And then let's see, so this is going to be... I'm going to want an edge loop there because I want that to be a face and there we go so now this side went from being one giant and gone to being all quads now the quads look a little bit weird um, but we'll fix that but um, that's kind of like the idea is that if you keep everything in quads things just play nicer and so we're going to continue going around this model and making everything quads so what we want to do is connect around to this side. Let's see if our, um, okay, that's, that's working. That's good. We can connect over to here. And what did I do? Uh, I did something weird there. I'm going to try that again. There we go. Okay, cool. Um, and so now if you follow, this is a quad, quad, this is a quad, 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 quad. And all, you know, obviously this piece is lower than where the floppy drive is, but you can actually follow the quads all the way around the model. Um, and that just makes for a better topology. So let's do the same thing with this. We'll go here, connect it over to there. That's now working. We want to do the same thing we did on the other side. So let's connect this to there and then we're gonna we can now um, dissolve this edge and now we want to do the same thing where we go all the way around with this and this is going pretty fast <laughs> I spent more time talking about why n-gons are bad so far than I've spent trying to just convert this back into quads okay so that that actually worked really well I'm gonna go here cursor to selected say scale around 3d cursor let's select all of these all the way to the back from the front view. Um, I'm going to go to wireframe 
and deselect these ones. We don't want to change those ones. Scale X zero, solid. And now we have a nice edge loop which goes all the way around the entire model. Um, just like we did on the other side, we can connect this to here. And I think we're starting to look good. I think, okay, so right here we have an issue. Um, so let's put an edge loop there, an edge loop there, connect this to that. Now this piece, I believe, is free floating, so I'm just going to separate that for now and hide it just so we don't have to deal with it. And here we have a bunch more places where we could insert um, edge loops, but I do want to do some cleaning up now because things are starting to get weird. So I'm going to take this point, say cursor to selected, and then I'm going to take all of these points on the back it for those and scale Z oops I don't want these ones either and so now that is perfectly flat and I'm gonna do the same thing here so we'll take what is going on here solid uh, do I have to do what is it alt n normals recalculate there we go Okay, um, so now I want to do the same thing here, which is going to be all of these. So I'm going to put my cursor here, cursor to selected, take all of these, scale Z, zero. Put my cursor to selected, take all of these, scale Z, zero. And then these are kind of wonky, so I'll put my cursor here. Let's go to back view. Select these, scale X, zero. I'll put my cursor here, select these, scale X, zero. So now we're starting to straighten out those quads. So now the back looks nice and straight. Uh, looks like we have an extra edge loop here that we forgot about. Let's go and fix that. There we go. Um, so now we want to deal with the fact that, well, we don't need this one at all. I'm just gonna dissolve that vertice. So now this already is a quad, so that's good. Um, it looks like we just need an extra edge loop around here. And where did it stop? It stopped here, so we have a problem here. So it looks like, do we have an extra edge? Is that what's going on? Yes, aha. So there's actually two edges here. And so we can just delete this edge. It'll create some holes, but we'll go in and fill them. And there's still something weird going on here. I'm just going to delete and start over. So let's, ah, because this was an n-gon. There is an n-gon hiding down here. So uh, it looks like you use the bevel tool here. I'm actually just going to delete this because with subdivision surface, we'll be able to put it back. So for now, I'm just going to delete this entire curve thing. It's making things a little bit more complicated than they have to be. So. I'm just going to get rid of it and we'll put it back the proper way. So I'm going to get rid of all of these vertices. Go back to uh, solid. And it looks like if we take this edge and this edge, we can make that a quad. And it wants, let's see, we'll put one here. All right. And then we can make that a quad. That looks good. Let's do the same thing over here. So what do we do? We did, how did I, oh wait, I want to dissolve that edge. Whoops, dissolve edge. Why is that doing that? Delete edge. I feel like we have some doubled up geometry here. Something's, okay, there we go. Um, actually solid. So what did I do here? I just went down one. So let's fill that in and then do that. 
Why is there? Oh, because I'm missing an edge loop here. That's why. And I'm trying to think the best way to do this because I, I don't want this triangle here. I guess, okay, so this is probably a case where, actually, I'm just going to dissolve these edges. Delete edge. Let's just fill this in. Uh, I have an extra vertice. Okay, so that's a quad again. Um, and then we'll do the same thing here. So I'm going to dissolve these edges. I'm going to dissolve this vertice and then just connect this over to there. Okay, so now we just have to fill this front, which doesn't seem too bad. So let's go into vertex. Okay, so we've cleaned up the sides a lot. So now, because we've made all of these quads all the way along here, all the way along the bottom, when I go to insert an edge loop, you can see it goes all the way around the model, which is a good sign. You want that to be the case. But I'm actually trying to fix this issue here. So let's see, we can dissolve this vertice, dissolve this vertice, we don't need those. Um, what we want is an edge loop there to go through the front. So now we can connect, oops, this and this. And what I actually wanna do is make this go to here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is take this edge and this edge and dissolve them. Then I'm going to take these and slide them over. And then now we can use the knife tool to connect that and connect that. Um, so now we want another edge loop here and here. So we can connect this to that and this to that. All right. So now you can see now we fixed it because when I try to insert an edge loop, it can go it can calculate the entire loop of the model. Same thing here. It can go all the way through the model. Um, here it can go through, here it can go through, but it's breaking in the front here. And that's because we haven't fixed the end gons that are up front yet, but we will fix those soon. So now things are behaving much nicer. We can put an edge loop here, an edge loop here, and your goal is to have it so that wherever you put an edge loop, it'll go around the entire model. And so we've almost got rid of all of the end gons. And as you can see, it's already starting to behave much nicer. Let's fix this. So I'm gonna put my cursor to selected. I'm gonna select this entire edge loop. And then from the side, I'm gonna say scale Y zero. And so now those are all in a vertical line all the way across the model for the entire length of the model. Now, some of these are okay if they're not perfectly flat, like this one where it's going downhill. That's not really affecting anything, but we need it to go downhill so that we could line up with this little, uh, I think it's a power button or something. Um, so now we really just have to fix the front because as you can see, I can put edge loops everywhere, but they break right here in the front. They don't go all the way through the model. And if they did go all the way through the model, things would just work a lot nicer. Um, but we're almost done here because literally, I think I've fixed everything except for that front. And once we fix the front, we can then start to do the subdivision surface modifier. So let's go and fix that. So luckily, we can just connect to some of this existing geometry. That should connect through there. This will connect through there. Um, this will go to there. This will go to there. Um, this will go to here. And this will go through here. Now, these quads aren't nice, right? I mean, they're weird shaped quads, but they are quads. So now if I were to put an edge loop, it can calculate all the way through. There's still a problem here, so we'll have to fix that. But it can calculate all the way through the model in these cases now. But you can see this is an end gone, so the line stops where that end gone is. And it would be nice if we didn't have the line stop ever. 
Um, you can also see right here, it goes through the floppy drive, but right here, it breaks again. Um, and so we'll have to fix that as well. But there are some cases where uh, you won't want to fix everything. Like for example, I could do an extra couple edge loops here just to fix this. But in this case, I think we'd probably be better just sliding that up there, sliding that down there. We will introduce a triangle, but it's a corner case where the triangle's not super bad. So, but because we do have two vertices on top of each other here, I'm going to go into um, X-ray mode. I'm going to get out my circle select tool, and then I'm going to say Alt M and say merge by distance. It'll say remove two vertices. So now these are merged. They're one. Turn off X-ray. So now if we put an edge loop here, it can calculate all the way through. So that's good. We just have to fix these two end gons now. And let's see. So the reason why is because we have this here. What's the best way to tackle this? We could put another edge loop, which actually probably is, yeah, now that I think about it, <laughs> I'm gonna actually undo what I just did here because what I'm thinking about it is, it'd be cleaner to have an edge loop that goes all the way around from this side because we already have like, you know, from here, it goes all the way around the model to the other side. Instead of connecting with the power button, it would make more sense just to connect it all the way through. So that's what I'm gonna go and do. So I'm gonna break some stuff, but sometimes that's just how it works. Sometimes you just have to go in and you know, you might have already fixed something, but then you have to go in and fix it again. So we will do that. And let's see, how do we wanna fix the bottom one? This is tricky because of this piece here. There's, I'm just trying to think in my head. There's a lot of different ways we could do this, but I'm not sure what the best is. Right, I'm going to delete this vertice for now. What is this? Why is there a? Get rid of that. Um, and try to figure out. Let's just do it one thing at a time. So I'm going to put an edge loop in here, another edge loop there. We can now connect this to there. And then we will connect this to there, put a vertice in here, move it over. We can do that. Have to do the same thing here. Ah, so we'll delete this vertice because we changed that. Whoops. All right, so that's looking good. Now we have an extra edge loop coming from going to here. So that would be All right, so we just have to add something here. So we'll just put some extra geometry here, connect it up to there, and then now we can do that. And you know, some, sometimes it's kind of puzzle like this. You just have to work your way through it. But we'll go and clean everything up when we're done. So now, you know, we've done some weird stuff. Like for example, right here, it's not straight anymore. So. I'll just put my cursor here, select this entire edge loop. And then from the side view, we can scale on Y so they're straight again. But now we should have, perfect. So now we fixed this problem. This edge loop can now go all the way through the model, all the way through, 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 all the way through. And when I say all the way through, there's no break in that yellow line. We can literally slice the model and it, the, the slice will go all the way through the entire model because everything is quads. There's no breaks anywhere. Um, and again, so we kind of have some weird things. These lines aren't straight, but it's okay um, because it goes through to the other side and it, it lines up over there. 
So um, I think we're ready for the subdivision surface modifier. And you, the reason why we went to all this trouble to get rid of the engons is because, just like I showed you over here, let's hide these. When I was doing this model, in order to get the tight edges, I have to insert edge loops. That's how you can kind of control your corners. And so just like the, uh, the Mac, this model can be sliced and the ring will always go around the entire model. There's no place where it won't. And so that's good topology. And so now that we have that ability, when we put on the subdivision surface modifier, we'll be able to use that ability and get really nice round corners everywhere. And everything is, is quads now. So um, I just want to, let's see. I'm just making sure that like most of our geometry is straight. I think it is. I Now, obviously I'm fixing a model um, that was given to me with a bunch of n-gons. If you were to design this from the beginning, it'd be a lot easier to make sure that all your lines and stuff are straight. But because we didn't have that luxury, things are a little bit weird. Um, and so I'm just going to think about uh, how I want to position some of these things. So let's see. So this one goes through the center and it seems fine. You know, it only bends out just a little bit to handle that floppy disk. Um, I mean, you could argue that maybe this would be better here or something, but I'm going to leave it. I think it's fine uh, for our purposes. And yeah, I think we're good to go here. So I'm just going to save a copy here. Um, and yeah, let's, let's give it a shot. So I'm going to put on my subdivision surface modifier and already it, it doesn't look terrible. I mean, compared to what it looked like before, uh, it looked like a big goofy mess. This actually just kind of looks like a, a rounded clay Macintosh. So let's uh, shade smooth to get rid of those hard edges. But uh, this actually looks pretty okay. So now we can actually start adding edge loops and getting this to look perfect. So let's do that. So the first thing I'm thinking about is the screen looks really weird. So now because we can add edge loops, I can tighten this up. And we probably want to add an edge loop in here, an edge loop right there. And so now we've turned that back into a square, but it does have those nice uh, slightly rounded corners. We probably want an edge loop here, which will round the corners, but not break the whole model. Let's do an edge loop here, edge loop here, edge loop here, edge loop here. And so now we're starting to get the definition back on these guys. But everything is nice and round. Um, what is an actual I love how you get all the vaporwave stuff when you when you look this up. What does the actual backside of this look like? So it's actually so it looks like it, it goes round in here, round here. And then these are actually sharp edges. So let's go and do that. So we want this to be actually very sharp. Now, what you can see happen there is as I was adding this edge loop, it makes this back piece nice and sharp, which is what we want. All right, we want that piece to be um, flat almost. But it broke some other things because now the front is way too sharp. And so what you can do is you can select this edge loop. And then from the side view, I'm going to go into wireframe and I'm going to deselect these back ones. So just these front ones are selected. Then with double G, I can bring that down, which slides along an axis. And as I bring it down, you can see it brings that curve back up front. So we have a hard edge back here, but we fixed it on the front. And we want to do the same thing here where we make that nice and sharp. Um, but maybe this sharp edge is too sharp. It's actually supposed to be kind of round, right? So now we can go in. And actually, I'll just take that whole edge loop and just kind of bring it. If it's all the way to the edge, you can see it makes it sharper. But if we bring it back just a little bit, we can get that nice round curve that it's supposed to have. 
Uh, so the bottom should probably be flat. Let's add an edge loop there. And because we made it um, out of entirely quads, adding these edge loops works perfectly. It goes around the entire model. So we can, we can edit the model and edit the curves very easily. Um, we can see that there's probably supposed to be an edge loop here to make that nice and round. I probably forgot one here and so on and so forth. And then let's see. So this edge loop probably should go down a little bit. Let's um, so now you have to be mindful to deselect the front ones. We can bring that down so it curves things just a little bit better around there. Um, what else do we need to fix? We need to fix this guy in the floppy drive. So the floppy drive, I can probably just put an edge loop there. That makes that nice and tight. We need one here to square that up. Probably one going like this, one like that. What's going on here? We probably want, need one like that. Now there are other ways you can do this um, using uh, creased edges, but I'm not gonna do that for this. I don't think we need it. All right, so that front panel looks a lot better. Let's put an edge loop here, edge loop here. There we go. All right, so now if we were to look at our wireframe in object mode, you can see it's, it's pretty dense, um, but everything just flows together. Everything is nice and smooth flowing. Everything is made out of quads. Um, and then when we go into edit mode, we actually have a much simpler mesh that we can edit um, to add curves and places. Um, you know, like we can, like for example, right here we see there's like a little bit of a stretching going on there. Because we made it all quads, we can add an edge loop here and tighten that up and now it looks better. And so that's kind of like the workflow for making a good topology. You want everything to always be quads. Um, it'll also make texturing easier later. If everything is always a square, it just makes it easier when you're applying textures. Um, so always, always, always avoid end guns. That's pretty much the golden rule. If you can avoid end guns, it's okay if you have some weird wiggly stuff like this, right? Like it's not a perfect straight line, but when we go into wireframe mode, it doesn't look horrible, right? And actually I'm seeing another place where we could add one right here because there's this line because we forgot to add an edge loop here. But now that we've tightened that up, the corner looks better. So you can just keep playing with this and adding edge loops. But um, to answer your question, um, you know, uh, is there any way to fix bad topology? Well, this video is already 45 minutes long, so I'm gonna call it here. I'm not gonna model the entire Mac um, for you, but I think that hopefully that explains it. Hopefully it's been a while since I recorded a video, so I was a little bit rusty, but basically if we open up Blender, and we go to the original file uh, right here. Uh, you had basically a ton of n-gons and you know this was all one piece with a bunch of corners in there. This was one piece with a bunch of corners, this, this, all of these. And while this is actually a good shape, um, oh, I forgot. So this was using um, so this is supposed to look like that. So my model actually looks wrong. Let's go and fix that. So what you want to do here is put an edge loop right there. But now we can actually just take this and kind of bring that back. And so now we have that curve. Um, but we're using subdivision to make the curve instead of um, a bevel modifier. There we go. Um, <clears throat> anyways, so... Um, you know, the, the, the shape, you, you've got the shape really good so far. Like, like your post said, um, you know, I, uh, 
I have all the shape done right, but the Mac has very smooth corners. Um, so yeah, you did do a very good job on getting the shape right. But because you used end gons everywhere, um, when you try to insert an edge loop, it doesn't work. Like you can see, uh, let me deselect everything. Like it doesn't even give me the yellow line. If I put my cursor here, it's like, it doesn't even try. If I try to put an edge loop here, it stops at the edge of the screen. If I try to put an edge loop going across the back, it doesn't do anything. Like there's nowhere where I can put an edge loop and I'm gonna actually save this again. Um, but let's, let's open up um, this one. With this model that, that we made, that, that I fixed up, I got rid of all of the end gons. So now, when I try to put an edge loop, the edge loops will literally go around the entire model. And that's what you wanna see, that's good topology. Because when you, like I showed you, when it's time to add the subdivision surface modifier, um, it'll behave nicely with the edge loops and you can get really nice round corners and uh, you, know, you can tighten them or make them smoother depending on where your edge loops are, but um, you know, you had a good start. Um, the, the shape was perfect, but uh, you can't use n-gons. That's the main thing. Do not use n-gons. Try to keep everything in quads. And when you do, it'll just make your life so much simpler because you can add edge loops, subdivision surface will work, and also when it comes time to do texturing, um, texturing will work as well. So um, if you want, you can message me on Reddit and I'll send you this uh, corrected version. But uh, hopefully you could follow the video and actually just... Um, go and get rid of all those end gons yourself and uh, you'll learn a lot more that way and uh, yeah there you go so hopefully um, hopefully that helped you and hopefully if anybody has this question in the future I can send them this video uh, remember to like comment subscribe all that good stuff and have a great day